Yo, what up, my Shadow Armies? It is I, Shadow Cordios, back again with another versus series matchup video. So, yesterday, I finally gonna get back to one of my oldest matchups that I was planning to do, but I never got the chance to do it because I canceled it, and that is Gundam Epion versus Godzilla. Before I continue on, link to the original videos that you're about to see. Both of them will be down below in the description box as well. Full screen when I'm my commentary, go support the official release. And the link to my GoFundMe will also be down below in the description box as well. You guys know what to do about a donation, etc. Please donate. I really, really need y'all guys up on this. And this is just my personal opinion about who I believe who actually will win between these two characters. This is just my opinion. If you have your own opinion who you believe will win, let me know in the comment section down below. So, this is an interesting matchup. So, pretty much we have Robot versus a Monster. This is a very interesting matchup, but I don't know what else to say to talk about it because I don't have the research. That's the reason why I'm using those footage from Death Valley you're about to see. So you guys can uh, know, learn more thing about, about the character for yourself. Send me, hearing me talking. Saying I know some people don't like hearing me talking. So I'm not going to waste any time. Let's just go ahead and get right into the uh, combatants. In the year 195 AC, yes AC, Earth and its space colonies were on the brink of civil war. Chaos had erupted, governments shattered from within. The only constant were five freedom-fighting mobile suits called Gundams. Piloted by a bunch of kids who have no idea how to have fun. Seriously, get laid or something. Intrigued, the disgraced Commander Trey's Kushranata set about creating his own Gundam. For sex? No, for Zex. This is getting really confusing. Try and keep up. Trey's hoped this new non-sexual fighting machine would finally answer the meaning of life and death. And birth! No! I have a guide here that will show you how to live from now on. And so the Gundam Epion was born. Do you think you've built a god or something? Maybe I do. Epion is a fierce force of metal and badassery. Like all Gundams, it's armored with Gundanium. Yet another stupidly named fictional metal that happens to be many times stronger and lighter than titanium. Standing 57 feet tall and weighing just under 10 tons, Epion is actually quite a bit smaller than your average Japanese giant robot. But for what it lacks in size, Epion compensates with incredible speed. With a max propulsion of nearly 200,000 pounds, Epion can fly over 250 miles per hour. But manning a Gundam at that speed is rough, and can kill a pilot who hasn't been trained. Epion's pilot is the legendary warrior and Trey's closest friend, Zex Marquis, the Lightning Count. Commander of the Oz Special Forces, valedictorian of a prestigious military academy, and sole pilot of the unstable Gundam prototype. How does the Wizard of Oz come into this now? Anime seriously confuses me. Well, regardless, Zex is a true warrior. I am a true soldier. Oh, look, an echo. Despite this, he could not handle the politics of war. After Trey staged a coup which spiraled out of control, Zex stumbled through the ensuing chaos like a lost pup, always ending up fighting for the wrong cause by complete accident. Whoops. I don't understand. Why am I still so spineless? Oh, I have an awesome giant Gundam that everyone needs to do awesome stuff! Poor me! But plot twist, Zex has been hiding a secret identity. He is, in fact, Miliardo Peacecraft, the long-lost heir to the throne of the pacifist Sank Kingdom. Yes, the Peacecrafts literally craft peace. At first, the only one who knew Zex's true identity was his slap-happy admirer, Noin. You'd think a cheerful girlfriend who doesn't have blood on her hands would help Zex lighten up a bit. But... Don't go getting too attached or party will hurt. But my soldiers aren't ever going to be killed in battle. Damn. He won't be hitting that for a while. Despite being a backstabbing, coup staging terrorist, Trey's Kushinata apparently has some high sense of honor, and this is reflected in Empion's arsenal. 
Aside from two tiny Vulcan guns, Epion was designed as a dueling suit and lacks effective long-range weaponry. But that's okay, cause check out this sword! The Beam Sword is connected directly to Epion's power source, which means its size and power can be increased on the fly. Epion also has a durable shield which houses a chain whip called the Heat Rod that can be superheated to slice through armor. But its greatest and most risky weapon is its onboard computer, the Epion System, a modified zoning and emotional range omitted system. This directly links with the pilot's brain and aids him by constantly predicting outcomes and strategies in mid-battle. And unlike other Zero systems, this modified version shows Zex his opponent's face as he's murdering them. Oh, that's right, for the nightmares. It gets worse. The Epion system relies on Zex ignoring all distractions, including his own drive to win. It predicts every possible outcome of the battle at hand and shares them with him. These include the outcomes where he loses, which take the forms of hallucinations. If Zex can't separate fact from fiction, these hallucinations may become reality. But despite the danger, it's totally worth getting into Epion's pilot seat, cause this giant robot is a born winner. It's capable of holding off four other Gundams at once, survived the heart of an exploding space station, and destroyed another giant space station with a single awesome sword slice. Ha ha! Gundam powers away! Of course, Epion does have its fair share of weaknesses, and even though Zex eventually overcame his turn to the dark side, nearly sacrificing his life for the greater good in the process, he never did quite become that perfect soldier he always wanted to be. But good news, he did eventually get in Noin's pants. Worth it! Just watch me, I'm gonna live right to the bitter end! I'll live the hard life of a warrior! The year was 1954, less than a decade after Little Boy and Fat Man had decimated Japan. The nuclear age had begun. As the United States tested their shiny new hydrogen bombs across the Pacific, one of them woke something up. Godzilla, the radioactive rampaging savior slash destroyer of Japan. Mutated by nuclear energy, Godzilla stands over 300 feet tall and weighs 90,000 tons. He is an unstoppable force of nature. And for some reason, Godzilla has made Japan his personal playground and has been stomping through it for 60 years. Couldn't he have picked on some other country? <laughs> Godzilla's radioactive mutation leaves everything in his wake contaminated. Water, plants, even people. Godzilla's presence alone turns a city block completely uninhabitable. Like that noisy upstairs neighbor, or people who let their dog shit in your front lawn. But Godzilla does not simply walk past his enemies to destroy them. His strength is insane! He once lifted and threw his arch-rival Kaiser Ghidorah, who weighs 100,000 frickin' tons. He channels this strength through his claws, teeth, tail, and epic gravity-defying drop kicks! Hilarious abilities aside, Godzilla would not be such a legendary kaiju without some serious firepower. He can emit atomic energy from his body for a short-range nuclear pulse. Or fire his signature atomic breath, a goddamn laser beam of pure radiation. That's like microwaving at least a hundred balls of tinfoil. Well, give or take a few million. The atomic breath can melt, burn, or blow up just about anything. And you know it just can't smell good. I mean, that's a lot of fish. No, 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 no. That right there is Zilla, the bastardized and shamed American version that Toho literally bought the rights to and completely rebranded just to murder on screen. <laughs> Take that, America. And that was just the real Godzilla's standard atomic breath. Yep, after absorbing a giant pterodactyl soul, Okay, he gained the power to boost his breath to the Red Spiral Ray. An attack so deadly, it only took a few blasts to obliterate the more powerful clone of himself, 
Space Godzilla. What? Space Godzilla? Yes, Space Godzilla is a thing. Moving on. Uh oh. Godzilla's cell structure can quickly regenerate from all manner of wounds. And despite being vulnerable to man made electricity, he possesses magnetic properties. Like a lightning rod, he can attract thunderbolts from the sky and use nature's power to enhance his own abilities. Or turn himself into a giant living magnet. Magnets? How do they even work? Well, believe it or not, that isn't the weirdest thing that Godzilla can do. If Big G needs to get somewhere quick, he bends over, charges up, and does this. Well, at least Japan is... creative? Wait, can that even happen? Scaling to the present, to actually lift his body means the atomic breath must have a force of over 328 trillion psi. That's the equivalent of one trillion riot control fire hoses, enough to wrap around the Earth 38,000 times. Damn. Godzilla has 44 known victories, largely due to his insane durability. He's fallen into a volcano, survived a black hole, and tanked a meteorite point blank without a scratch. But despite popular belief, Godzilla is not invincible. His regeneration takes time, his speed is lacking, and despite having two brains, one in his skull and the other where his tail meets his torso, he's pretty darn clumsy. Where were you on that one, ass brain? He officially lost a fight against King Kong, and he's even died in four separate films. But Godzilla's victories definitely outweigh his failures. There's a good reason they call him the King of the Monsters. Alrighty then, so you guys saw the research that pretty much I found from Only in Death Bob, so you guys won't have to hear my damn mouth. But before I get to who I believe will actually win, um, this fight will be a very interesting matchup that I would love to see. But there's a reason why that I want to make this matchup. I will get to that the reason why I pick who I believe will win. The reason why I believe, and this is just my opinion, and I believe that Gundam and Beyond would win against Godzilla. And there's a reason why. One... We're talking about a Gundam who destroyed a friggin' battle station, two of them in one slice, and we have a friggin' and a Gundam who actually, um, um, damn, it's most powerful, uh, Gundam, I can't fucking speak, and two, Zaxxon has the ability to see visions of the future, what's gonna happen, and if he used that advantage to Godzilla, he actually would win. And plus, he, this will give him advantage for Godzilla's weakness. If you guys saw the weakness of part that he is slow, something like that. And Gundam Epion is not a lot more faster than Godzilla. So pretty much, I definitely can see Gundam Epion will take the win against Godzilla. And the reason why I want to do this match is because Godzilla needs to fucking lose. I'm sorry. I know you guys are the fan of Godzilla, but Godzilla has to fucking lose. I mean, yeah, we're talking about a monster who defeat, uh, defeat ten monsters in a final war. That doesn't make no sense. A freaking one monster take on ten powerful monsters that he should have just lost. And and he, this character could fight against his opponent for twelve hours. I mean, hell, I, Gundam Empion won't probably last that long. But I mean, like I said, Gundam Empion is a lot more faster, durable. Hell, this guy could destroy, like I said before, he destroyed freaking battle station with one slice. But his vision, Saxon's vision, is will give him the future about what's going to happen. He will use that as the advantage and use Godzilla's slow, his weakness, Godzilla's weakness of slow to his advantage as well. So, in my personal opinion, the winner of this matchup is Gundam Epion. So, you guys, uh, let me know in the comments section down below. Tell me what you guys are saying. Do you guys agree that Gundam Epion should have won this match? Or you guys saying that Godzilla should have won this matchup? Let me know in the comment section down below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Link to the original videos will be down below the description box as well. And the link to my GoFundMe will all be down, down below the description box as well. Please donate. It really helps me out and, and also help me out to support the channel as well. Again, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Neil before, shout out Critias. I'll see you guys later.